Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today's notes are going to be on lesson 3.2e or 3.2 extension, um, factoring expressions. And today you're going to be looking for eight things to write in your notes. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to talk about is the vocabulary term. What does it mean to factor an expression? That is when you write the expression as a product of factors. And it's like you're starting with an expression and you're undoing the distributive property. So when you start, your um, your expression would look like this. When you factor it, your expression would look like this. Okay, and so we're going to figure out how to go from here to here because what we've been doing is been able to start here before we distribute and then distribute stuff. Now we're just kind of working backwards. So this next one, um, you're going to just watch and then write it. It says factor 24x minus 18 using the GCF. What you need to do is write all the factors of 24 and 18 and then find the greatest common factor. I know 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. Those are all of my factors of 24. With 18, I have 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6. Okay, and then both 24 and 18 have 6 in common, so that's going to be my greatest common factor. The greatest common factor is going to go on the outside of the parentheses, and that's basically what you're undoing with the expression. So you're essentially just taking 6 out. Notice, remember how we did the distributive property and we multiplied? Well, this time we're going to be focusing on dividing. So I'm essentially just going to take 6 and divide it out of both of these numbers. 24x divided by 6 will be 4x, and then 18 divided by 6 will be 3, so that's how I get the 4x minus 3, and then you always want to keep the number that you factored on the outside, because that needs to show what, what was being factored. To check your work, remember you can always distribute again, 6 times 4x, and 6 times negative 3 will still give you 24x minus 18. Go ahead and take the time now to pause the video if you haven't already to write down how we factored using the GCF. Click play when you're ready to go on. So for number three, um, you're going to try it. This one actually tells you what to factor. Sometimes it'll tell you what to factor, sometimes not. You just have to kind of pay attention there. So go ahead and pause the video. You're going to factor negative two out of negative 4p plus 10. Remember, you should have something on the outside and then some stuff in the inside of your parentheses. Go ahead and try it now. All right, so by now you've, you have tried the question, and then so let's go ahead and check. So factoring negative 2, that means you're just going to be dividing by negative 2. I know that whatever I'm factoring needs to go on the outside here, so negative 2 would be going on the outside of the parentheses. Here we go. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is going to be 2, and then I just keep my variable, p. 10 divided by negative 2 is going to be negative 5, so I'll just write minus 5. To make sure that this answer is correct, I can redistribute the negative 2 to see if I get end up getting my original expression, negative 4p plus 10. Negative 2 times 2p is negative 4p, and negative 2 times negative 5 is 10p, and that is, or sorry, 10, and that's exactly what we got um, originally, so that so we know that this is our correct answer. Sometimes it's going to ask you to write, to factor out the coefficient, okay? Remember, the coefficient is the number with the variable. Don't freak out again just because you have fractions. Factoring out one half just means to divide by one half. Okay, so you're going to be doing 1 half x divided by 1 half and 3 halves divided by 1 half. Okay, remember 1 half will be on the outside once you're done factoring. 1 half divided by 1 half, remember I always do copy dot flip. Okay, so copy dot flip. So it would be 1 half x dot 2 over 1. That's just going to give me 2 over 2x, which is equal to 1x. Okay, so that's going to be my first thing in my parentheses. One half stays on the outside. Three halves divided by one half. Again, copy dot flip. So three halves times two over one. That's going to be six over two, which is equal to three. 
So my 3 would go there, and then I keep a plus sign because 3 is positive. So here would be my answer after I factored out the coefficient, which is always the number with the variable. 1 half. These are you're going to try on your own. You're going to factor out the GCF. So you do need to make sure you know the GCF of 8 and 16 and 9 and 15. So go ahead and take time now to pause the video and try these on your own. Once you're done, click play so you can check your work. All right, here we go. So the GCF of six, or sorry, 8 and 16 is going to be 8, okay? because 8 can go on 8 and 16. So that means the 8 is going to be going on the outside of the parentheses, and then I'm just going to figure out what happens when I divide. 8 divided by 8 will give me 1z, and then 16 divided by 8 will give me 2. Notice that there's a negative in front of 16, so negative 16 divided by 8 gives me a negative 2, so my answer should be 8, parentheses, 1z, minus 2. For number 6, the GCF of 9 and 15 is equal to 3. So I'm just going to divide both of these numbers by 3. 3 will need to be shown on the outside. Don't forget that. That is where your GCF or whatever you're factoring goes. 9a divided by 3 is going to be 3a plus a positive 15b divided by 3, that's going to give me 5b. Remember, you can always go back and check your work by redistributing to see if you got the correct answer. This one, I wanted to talk with you and show you how to do it, so you might want to write it down after I'm done and pause the video, or you can write as you go, whatever's easiest for you. So the square window has a perimeter of 8x plus 12 feet. Remember our square is equivalent on all sides and it has four sides. One, two, three, four. Write an expression that represents the side length of the window in feet. So what we want to know is just how much is one side. Right now we've been given 8x plus 12 are all sides. What we need to know is just one side. Notice again that a square has four sides, so what better thing to do is just divide this whole entire thing by four. Okay, that's going to represent one each side, or each side. So 8x divided by four is 2x, and 12 divided by four is three. So 2x plus three is going to be the length of one window. All right, this last little bit, you're just going to try a little matching um, game here. Um, so you're basically just going to figure out which one of these expressions on the left, 1 through 4, match with the distributive property A through D on the right. Go ahead and pause the video, and then once you're done, um, click play so you can check your work. Alright, so number 1 should be matched with letter C. If you notice, 6 times 2x is 12x, and 6 times 1 is 6. Number 2 should be matched with letter B. 6 times 2x is 12x, and 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. For number 3, it looks like um, that one is going to match with letter D. Negative 6 times 2x is negative 12x, and negative 6 times 1 is negative 6, which means number 4 is matched with letter A. Negative 6 times 2x is negative 12x, negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6. So that's going to conclude our video today on Lesson 3.2 Extension. Just make sure you have your eight things written in your notes and tune in for next time. Have a great day.